What's up dudes? I'm back. It's been a while. It's been too long. But I'll make a separate video explaining where I've been and stuff. Anyways, let's get back into the videos. So, I said for a long time that I'd um, remake my Unreal tutorial series because the videos are starting to get a little bit outdated. Um, some of the code... I guess it compiles, but it like doesn't do what it should do. Uh, so, you know, because Unreal Engine changes, it goes through new iterations and things change. Anyways, um, let's get started. So, first thing I'm going to do is open up the Epic Games Launcher. Uh, if you don't have this, open up Visual Studio, make a new project, go to the Game tab and install Visual Studio there. Sorry, um, Epic Games Launcher there. Or I guess you can just get it off the Epic Games site. I'm sure you could find it pretty easy. Uh, and once you've installed it, it might take a while, but click the giant launch button here. And wait for the editor to launch. So we're going to go new project, C++, and there's pretty much a bunch of like really cool templates here. Uh, these will help you get a game going nice and fast, but I'm just going to use the uh, first person project because that one's nice and simple to use. And I'm going to call this uh, YT. I'm going to create a project. And what's happening um, when I create the project is basically it's going to go away and generate a bunch of project files, things like that. And then it's actually going to boot up the engine itself. And so depending on how um, fast or slow your computer is, this might take a little while to load. And once it's done, I will be able to show you guys all of the uh, code. So once it's done, uh, Visual Studio is going to boot up. And um, over on the right hand side of the screen, you're going to see the Solution Explorer. And if we go into the source file uh, folder and then go into our project, here are all the files that were generated when we made our project. So you can see there's already some code written here. This is just um, generated code. Basically just gets automatically generated. And uh, yeah, so here is the code that lets us walk around in the game. And uh, jump and shoot projectiles and things like that. There's the projectile class there. There's the heads up display class, the game mode class. And um, keep in mind that I am going to assume you guys have like a basic knowledge of C++. Um, so if you don't have the basics down, definitely go away and learn those. Anyways, um, let's click on the Unreal Editor and let's click play. So right now a bunch of code is being executed. All that code that I just showed you before and it's allowing us to run around in the game basically. And I can also shoot. Rest in peace to all the people wearing headphones. Don't say I didn't warn you. I'm so sorry. I've probably deafened like half of you. Um, but yeah. Very simple little template there. And um, you know what, why not get started, let's just write some code. So, first thing we're going to do is click on the sources panel, so just click here. And then go into C++ classes and then your project. So let's add a new class. You can see these are the classes here that are currently being used. Let's make a new one. And if you didn't know, I mean I would expect that most people if you're watching this video know this, but a class is kind of just a way of um, describing something. So this YT character class describes the player here. It describes how the player will walk around, how fast the player is going to walk around, um, a bunch of stuff like that. We've got the game mode class which doesn't do anything right now. We have the HUD class. What that does is it draws this nice little um, cross here to the screen. And we've got the projectile, which uh, shoots projectile. Cool. Um, okay. Let's add some code of our own. So let's add a new class. To do that, you can either go File, New C++ Class, or you can just right click here and go New C++ Class. And I'm going to work with the Actor Class. Now, essentially what you're doing, what you're choosing from this little menu here, is what do you want your class to inherit from? What type of class do we want to create? So I'm going to create an actor class and you'll probably be using the actor class a lot. Anything that can be placed or spawned in the world as you can see here should be an actor. 
So um, an item that the player can pick up off the ground would be an actor. A light switch that can be switched on and off should be an actor. Um, a light that flickers in the scene should be an actor. All these things um, should be actors. So let's add our own actor. I'm going to call it random actor. I don't think we're going to make anything cool just yet. We're not going to make any light switches or pickups or anything like that just yet. Uh, we'll start off with the basics. So let's add um, let's add this random actor. You know what? I'm going to call it pickup. I'm going to create class. I'm not going to make a full pickup yet, but we'll just make the start of a pickup, I guess. So when I click create class, it's going to generate the class for me. And if I go into the Visual Studio here, you see we have... Where is it? There we go. Pickup.cpp and pickup.edge. So this is our class. Let's open these up. Now, in the class, we get some automatically generated code. We have this begin play function and we've got a tick function. We've also got a constructor, which you use to set up default values. And then we've got the header file, which is where we define all of the functions and variables that will be used in the class. If everything I just said sounded like complete gibberish, again, go away, um, read a couple of C++ books or watch some videos or something. Uh, it shouldn't take you too long to get the basics down and you, you know, it's pretty useful anyway. So let's uh, add a variable inside of our .h or header file. And we'll put a little, it's, it's always good practice to put a little comment above the variable. So I'm going to put a comment here saying um, the static mesh for the pickup. So we're going to make a static mesh here. And to do that, we're going to say use static mesh component. Uh, SM underscore my mesh. Now keep in mind that you don't have to put SM underscore before it. I just like to do that. I don't think it's even recommended by the Unreal dudes to do that. I just do it myself because that way whenever I see the uh, variable I know straight away, oh, that's a uh, static mesh that it's referring to, right? Now let's go into the constructor and actually instantiate the static mesh. Let's actually initialize it, basically. We'll make it um, be equal to something. So we're going to use this method, and you guys are going to get really sick of typing this because you use this all the time in the Unreal Engine, and it is the uh, create default subobject uh, function. And honestly, you use it all the time. And that takes a little piece of text inside here, and that is just the name that it's going to be given inside of the editor. I've decided to call it my mesh because why not? Cool. So we created the um, the mesh. We've instantiated it, as you say. But right now, um, we can't edit it in the editor. The reason for that is because I need to add this little thing here, U property. And if I put edit anywhere in there, that now tells the compiler, the compiler comes through and it reads all of this code and it gets to this part here, you property edit anywhere. And the compiler now goes, oh, okay, this here should be editable anywhere. So it says the compiler takes note of that and it goes, oh, okay, let's let the user edit this anywhere they want. So you can edit it and the editor, you can edit it from blueprints, you can edit it anywhere. Um, edit anywhere is one little keyword you can put in there, there are a bunch more, I'm not going to go into what you could put in there, but there's honestly a bunch more, we'll, um, we'll cover those in later tutorials. But that's the, uh, the basics, so we just made a static mesh for the pickup. A static mesh, by the way, is basically just a 3D model, so um, since it's a pickup, uh, say it was a battery pickup, the static mesh for the battery would be a little battery 3D model on the ground. You'll see what I mean in a second. So let's go ahead and click save all, or you can just hit control shift S. It'll do the same thing. And uh, we'll go back into the editor here and click on the compile button. That's going to compile our code um, and might take a little while. Of course that's done and let's drag our pickup into the scene. So as you can see we could drag any of these in. We can drag more characters in if we want. Uh, but let's drag another uh, pickup in here. Or our first pickup in here, sorry. So here's the pickup. 
And notice there's no 3D model there yet. And that's because we haven't set one. We set in our code that we want there to be a static mesh, but we never actually set the static mesh. So to do that, I'm going to click on sm underscore my mesh, which is the mesh that we uh, that we had. And from this little drop down menu, now we can choose a static mesh. These are all static meshes that come with the uh, first person project. You can uh, import your own if you like using 3ds Max or Maya or any of those um, 3D modeling programs. So if we hit play now, here is our pickup. Now I don't know why it's a rock pickup, that was kind of dumb of me to make it that, but there you go. We can also change the size of the pickup. We can do this in the editor. Or if we wanted, we could actually write some code to change the size of the pickup. And you can see now it's just a little rock on the ground. So we created this rock essentially through code. Now, you might be thinking, well, if we created the rock using code, why don't we just do this? Look, you can just go to starter content, props, and you can just drag the rock into the level. You don't even have to code it. Why are we coding it? That, what? Well, because we created this rock using code, we can now manipulate the rock using code. So if we want to, I can write some code to make this rock teleport around the room. Or I can, in this case, I can write code to let the rock be picked up because it's a pickup. I could also write code to do a bunch of different stuff. But anyways, I've been rambling too much. That's kind of the basics. We've just written some code to make a 3D object spawn inside of the world. Um, you can drag in more instances of this if you want. But note that you'll have to set the model again, so we could have a material sphere this time. And uh, yeah, so you guys play around with that if you like. Um, but in the next tutorial, we'll actually start adding some functionality. So I'm going to make the rock float up and down, because why not? That, that'll be a good uh, starting point anyway. So anyways, guys, I'll see you over at part two.